Well, welcome back to the Walk as Jesus Walk podcast series. And in today's message, we're going to continue in our short series discussing the topic of is this the end of the world? We know lots of events are happening in the world. And when we began this, uh, now we're in the sixth part of this series. Uh, we know that many things have been happening in the Middle East, in Israel, uh, in Gaza, and now in Syria and in many other places. Not just there, though. Play things are happening. Events are happening all throughout the world. Uh, we know that uh, there are people crying out and pleading to the Palestinians. And some of them are, are unjust in what they're saying. They're just because um, there's a lot of people who are dying, who are uh, casualties of this war. But then there's others who are using this just as a way to become more violent and to push an agenda which uh, their narrative is to eliminate Israel completely. And so with that, uh, we are now in part six, and here we'll be discussing chapters 12 through 16. As we continue through this, we're going to be looking at the bowls of wrath, the, the as they call them, the bold judgments of God's wrath. And there are seven of them. Over the next few podcasts, we'll discuss the remaining chapters from John's account of the revelation of Jesus. I do encourage you to read along, read through the totality of this revelation. Uh, it's the last book in the New Testament in the Bible. And sometimes it's called the book of Revelation or it's John's revelation of Jesus from Jesus Christ, uh, uh, whatever it's called uh, in whatever you're looking in, whatever version, it's that last book in the Bible. Now, in the previous podcast, in um, part five, we discussed the seven seals and the seven trumpets, both talking about the wrath of God, the judgment of God. Uh, they are part of the oncoming judgment that's going to hit this world as God's wrath, all the disobedient mankind who remain and dwell on it. We know Jesus will come back, as we've already discussed earlier, uh, for his bride, his remnant, his body, his church. And when he takes them and catches them up with him, the wrath of God is about to hit this world. And so here we now are going to turn to the seven bold judgments. We're going to see a few other things that happen in heaven and on earth before that, before those bold judgments. Um, at the end of this podcast, I'm going to provide a description of how the seven seals that we talked about in the prior part and the seven trumpets and what we're going to talk about today, the seven bowl judgments, they're actually aligned with one another. As I mentioned in earlier podcasts, John wrote down the things that he saw in heaven during the revel his revelation, but we need to realize that they're not necessarily written chronologically. They're not written in an account that says this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this. They're just these are going to happen during the time of tribulation. In fact, when we get to the end of this, I'll show you how each of the seal, trumpet, and bowl judgments unfold in series. Number one, number two, and and so on through number seven. So when the first seal is broken, then the trumpet will be blown, and then the bowl judgment will be poured out on the earth. Uh, and then the second seal will, will be broken and the second trumpet and, and so on and so forth. I'll discuss that more in detail at the, at the very end. And so the final judgment, the final seal, trumpet, and bowl will actually usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now let's go to the Revelation uh, and we're going to look in chapter 12 first. And we read, and a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed in the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. These 12 stars are the 12 tribes of, of Israel. She was pregnant and crying out in pain and agony of giving birth. Now, the woman is Israel. And we know the 12 stars are the 12 tribes of Israel. Then another sign appeared in heaven, a huge red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven royal crowns on his head. 
His tail swept a third of the stars in the sky, tossing them to the earth. Now, this is the fall of Satan. And a third of the angels were, were cast to the earth. They fell from heaven, cast to the earth. This dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, stood before Israel, ready to devour her child as soon as she gave birth. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. That would be Jesus. And her child was caught up to God, to his throne. That would be his ascension to heaven. Now the woman, the Jews, they will flee to the wilderness. It says they fled to the wilderness. This is what John saw and he wrote down where God had prepared a place for her, the Jews, to be nourished 1,260 days. That's three and a half years. We know that uh, Daniel's week, uh, seven days, which is really seven years, and I'll talk more about that at the very end of this podcast as well. We know that in the first three and a half years of those seven years, there's going to be peace, a false sense of peace. And the Antichrist will be revealed and he will actually get to a point where in the middle of the week, the three and a half year mark, he will start to pursue anything that belongs to God. Meaning first, he will pursue those who are in Christ, the bride, his church, and he will also pursue those who are Israelites, the Jews. And then it goes on to say that war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels, which was two-thirds of the angels, fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough, and no longer was any place found in heaven for him and his angels. So now they are solely here on this earth. They cannot go back and forth. There's no more connection with celestial heaven. They are locked in here. And the great dragon, Satan, was hurled down. That ancient serpent, the one who deceived Eve, called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. Why do you think so many people don't believe what Jesus offers? It's because of Satan. Why do you think so many people follow their own path or follow religious ways? Because of Satan. He is the deceiver. Well, he was hurled down to the earth and his angels with him. We call those demons. Those are all those who followed Lucifer, who is now, we call him the devil and Satan. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down. He who accuses them day and night before our God. See, up to this point, Satan goes back and forth and accuses all of those who are in Christ, accuses them of anything that we do that is a part of our sinful nature. And naturally, he not only tries to cause us while we're living here in this world to, to find... Uh, that we're disconnected to God, but he's seeking to tell God just how bad people are. And he's constantly accusing those who are on this earth. Well, it goes on to say that he's no longer going to do this. They have conquered him. And how have those people conquered him? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Because they are crying out, I surrendered my life to follow Jesus in this wicked world filled with disobedience to God. And because of the Lamb, because of Jesus and the sacrifice of his blood, we are cleansed if we persevere to the end. And so it goes on to say that, and they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. This is where it really is going to end. Many of us are going who are alive during the time of this revelation that John received, whether that's coming real soon or coming in, in the not so distant future. But whenever it comes, those who did not love their lives in this world 
so much to shy away from death and end up walking away or falling away from Christ, they will be the ones who are conquerors. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, John wrote, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because now once the church is pulled off this earth, the great fury that the devil has come down to you, knowing he has only a short time. So before God's wrath, we know that Satan, who's thrown down to the earth, will first try to wipe out God's church. He will persecute. He will cause people to be faced with prison and even with death. But whoever perseveres to the end, those will be the ones gathered up with Christ in the cloud. Not somebody just because they lived a religious life and they thought they were going to church and then their pastor told them, oh, you don't have to worry about anything because Jesus is going to come back and take you off the earth. Well, those same people, if they never made a true commitment to Christ, I mean, truly to Christ, they didn't just become uh, a Christian religious person. They truly surrendered each day to follow Jesus. Those people, well, they will be caught up. But the others, well, they won't want to lose their lives. They didn't want to lose their lives when Christ gave them the opportunity. Why would they lose their lives now? They're going to believe the lie and they're going to follow the Antichrist. They will receive the mark of the beast. And so this is a huge woe to the earth and the sea because the devil is going to pursue and kill many before Jesus comes back to take his remnant off this earth. And when the dragon saw that he had been given th um, two wings of a great eagle to fly in the presence of the serpent to her place in the wilderness, where she was nourished for a time, time and a half times, that's three and a half years, then from the mouth of the serpent, spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away in the torrent. But the earth helped the woman and opened its mouth and swallowed up the river. So there's going to be some form of water that's going to be used. And we know that God punished the whole earth with a flood. Well, the serpent's going to try to use flood waters to destroy the, the Jews who are, have fled to the wilderness. And you know what? It says that the earth helped the woman, the Jews, opening its mouth, swallowing up the river that had been poured out from the dragon's mouth. And the dragon was enraged at the woman and went to make war with the rest of her children. Those would be the other Jews who kept the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Wow. So that means that Jews are going to turn to Jesus and surrender their lives, just as those who were in the church did. Yes, those who are Jews will surrender their lives because they will realize, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus is the Messiah, their Messiah. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. So in Revelation 13, we read, Then I saw a beast with ten horns and seven heads rising out of the sea. There were ten royal crowns on his head and blasphemous names on his head. The beast I saw was like a leopard with the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his power, the dragon being Satan and the beast being the Antichrist. He gave him his power and his throne and great authority. And one of the heads of the beast appeared to be mortally wounded. We know somebody or something is going to be mortally wounded, meaning, okay, they died, but the mortal wound was healed, and the whole world marveled and followed the beast. This is where that delusion comes in. Wow, he will say that he is God, and this had to be from God, especially those who are religious, those who just go to church all the time and read their Bibles and think, hey, I'm living for God, kumbaya, but they're not living for Jesus Christ. Well, they're going to think, hey, this is God. It's got to be God. And they will believe the delusion. Why? Because they weren't following Jesus in the first place. 
And it goes on to say that they worship the dragon who had been given authority to the beast and they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast and who can wage war against it? This must be from God. And the beast was given a mouth to speak arrogant and blasphemous words, calling himself God is blasphemous, but people will believe him. An authority to act for 42 months, that's three and a half years. And the beast opened its mouth to speak those blasphemies against God and to slander his name and his tabernacle, those who dwell in heaven. Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. That would be those who are in Christ. That would be those who are in the world following Jesus. And it's going to happen when this time of tribulation takes place. And they are going to be pursued to conquer the saints is what he's doing. And it was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation all around the world. And all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast. Everyone on this world will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life, belonging to the lamb who was slain, all except for those who have been following Jesus and are sealed in Christ. I'm not talking about people who made some kind of a verbal commitment and went to church and got water baptized and did all those things. I'm talking about people who truly surrendered their lives while in this world, they lost their lives in this world to follow Jesus for the kingdom of heaven. And they'll gain eternal life at this point right here. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is destined for captivity into captivity, he will go. And if anyone is to die by the sword, by the sword, he must be killed. Talking about saints here, even to the point of death. Here is a call for the perseverance and faith of the saints. You either fall away or you remain in Christ. Then I saw another beast rising out of the, sea, the earth. This beast had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. And this beast exercised all the authority of the first beast, and it caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, the one who had the mortal wound, the one that everyone will be deceived by. It says whose mortal wound had been healed. And the second beast performed great signs as, as though it was from heaven to cause even fire from heaven to come down to the earth in the presence of the people. Let me show them the sign. Because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived those who dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image to the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet had lived. That's the first beast. And so not so much different than when Moses was on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, and all of a sudden, the Jews, the Israelites at that time, said, let's make ourselves uh, our own little um, statue that we can worship. And that's exactly what people in this world would do, is they will make their own thing. The second beast was permitted to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, would receive a mark on their right hand and on their forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless they had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of its name. Here is a call for wisdom. Let the one who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. It's not seven. That number is 666. Now, a lot of people have heard this, and you know, there's all this, this satanic stuff that's out there and all these songs and all of this um, speculation. This is going to happen. People are going to fall away from Christ. They're going to worship the beast. They are going to receive this mark, whatever this mark is, and they won't be able to eat. They won't be able to buy anything unless they have it. And so, of course, they'll do it. I mean, just imagine we had COVID and how many people 
flocked in droves to go and get their shot because, oh my gosh, I was told I have to do it. Well, now we find that the shot didn't stop people from getting COVID or not, but it was a fear factor and it was being directed for so many people. They were forced to do it. What a beautiful little illustration of what this mark will be like is that people will buy into it because they have to. Now in Revelation 14, we read, then I looked and I saw the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. These are the 144,000 Jews, Israelites. And I heard the sound from heaven, like the roar of many waters and the loud rumbling of thunder. Now, mind you, these 144,000 Jews have been preaching Jesus to all of the Israelites. And up to this point, and he heard this great roar, this loud, loud rumbling of thunder. And the sound I heard was like the harpists drumming their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. They are the ones who have not been defiled with women, for they are virgins. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. These are Jews who are sold out for Jesus. They have re been redeemed from among men as first fruits to God and to the lamb, Jesus. And no lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying overhead with the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, every nation and tribe and tongue and people. And he said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship the one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the springs of the water. Then a second angel followed saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. Who has made all the nations drink the wine of the passion of her immorality? We'll talk more about Babylon who makes this great fall uh, later. And a third angel followed them calling out in a loud voice, if anyone worships a beast and its image and receives its mark on the forehead or his hand, he too will drink the wine of God's anger poured undiluted into the cup of his wrath. Those are the bowls that I'm going to be discussing. And he will be tormented in fire and sulfur and in the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb. And the beast and his image or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. Here is the call for perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven telling me to write, blessed are the dead, those who die in the Lord from this moment on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labors for their deeds will follow them. And I looked and I saw a white cloud and seated on that cloud was one like the son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one seated on the cloud, swing your sickle and reap because the time has come to the harvest. It's time to gather your church, your remnant, your people from this earth for the crop of the earth is ripe for the one seated on the cloud, which we know is Jesus himself, swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested and the church was no more on this planet. And now the wrath of God is about ready to hit. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel with the authority over the fire came from the altar, altar and he called out in a loud voice to the angel with a sharp sickle, swing your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the grapes from the vine of the earth because its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the grapes of the earth and he threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. And the winepress 
was trodden outside the city and the blood that flowed from it rose as high as the bridles of horses for a distance of 1,600 stadia, which is 184 miles of blood all the way up to the bridles of a horse. Now, in Revelation 15, we read, Then I saw another great and marvelous sign in heaven, seven angels with the seven final plagues. These are the bowls with which the wrath of God is completed. And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire beside which stood those who conquered, who had conquered the beast and his image and the number of its name. They were holding harps from God and they sang the song of God's servant Moses out and, and of the lamb. Great and wonderful are your works, O Lord God Almighty. Just in true are your ways, O King of the nations. We will not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this, I looked, and, and the temple, the tabernacle of the testimony, was opened to heaven. And out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. It's time for God's wrath. Dressed in clean and bright linen and girded with golden sashes around their chest. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter that temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Now in Revelation 16, we read, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go pour out on the earth the seven bowls of God's wrath. So now I'm going to align the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowl judgments. So in the first seal, and, and you can go back and look at this, and I recommend that you do so that you can follow along um, in chapters six through eight of Revelation is talking about the seals. When that first seal is broken, it says as a white horse, the Antichrist is let loose upon the world. The first trumpet says, which is in Revelations eight to 11, the trumpets, one third of the earth Trees, grass is burned up. And the bowl judgment is what's poured out on the earth to cause this to happen. It says horrible sores on those with the mark of the beast. So we know that this is going to be in the second half of Daniel's week, the three and a half years that the Antichrist is going to be let loose to wreak havoc on this on this earth. So that first seal's broken a white horse, the Antichrist. The first trumpet sounds, so the seal's broken. What will happen? The trumpet sounds, make it happen. The bowl is poured out and horrible sores on those with the mark of the beast. The second seal is broken. Okay, what does the second seal say? Wars began and peace is lost. Sound the trumpet. The second trumpet sounds and a third of the sea creatures die and ships are destroyed. Because of the seventh bowl judgment, the, the second bowl judgment of the seven bowl judgments, where it says the sea of blood, everything in the sea dies. The third seal is broken. That's the black horse, the famine that breaks out. The trumpet sounds, the third trumpet, and a third of the waters are polluted and many die because when the bowl was poured out on the earth, waters of blood, all the waters are polluted. The fourth seal is broken. It's the pale horse, the ultimate results of war and famine, which is death. Now, when that trumpet blows, a third of the sun and a third of the moon and a third of the stars are darkened. And that bowl being poured out, if you look at the 
the fourth bowl judgment says the sun burns and scorches people. Then remember the three woes. Woe, woe, woe to the last three seals, trumpets, and bowls. Okay, so the fifth seal is open. Persecution of God's people, bringing more of God's vengeance on the world. Martyrs are reassured. If you're running, if you're fleeing and you're persevering, you will spend eternity with Christ. The first woe, Abaddon, from the pit of hell, locusts and demons are released to torment people. And that bowl is actually described as the seat of the beast. It brings complete darkness over the Antichrist kingdom. He now has control of the whole earth. The, the church is no longer here at this point. Um, so he has full control. We know that the remnant of Israelites are still on this earth. Many of them already have coming to Christ because of the witness of not only, and we'll talk more in the future about this, not only the 144,000 Jews, but the two witnesses that will witness to all of the Jews, and it's going to be broadcast. Uh, we know that many, many people are going to hear what they have to say. They're going to be talking to the people of Israel. Well, then the sixth seal is broken, and it says the sun and the moon and the stars event takes place, a great earthquake, along with other celestial upheavals. So the trumpet blows, and that's the second woe, for bound demons are released to kill one-third of the humankind with an army. And at that point, the bowl, the, the sixth bowl, it says the Euphrates rise up, kings of the east come, and the scene is now set with this great army for the battle of Armageddon. And then the seventh seal is broken. There'll be silence in heaven for about a half an hour. The third woe is ready to come about. It proclaims Christ's coming judgment. And the bowl, the seventh bowl, says there'll be a great earthquake. Cities of all nations will fall. A huge hailstorm will occur. And then the skies will roll back and Jesus will return in his second coming. So much more that we're going to be looking at this in our next few parts, but that gives you a great picture of how the seals, trumpets, and bowls are aligned and that each one will happen the first, the second, the third, and, and all the way through. You see how John wrote those down in separate chapters, but they actually happen the first seal then brings ushers in the first trumpet and brings in the first bowl. And this is the wrath of God. Now back to Daniel's seven years or his 70th week. We know that what kicks that off to begin that seven year, that final week is a peace treaty that's established between the Antichrist and Israel to begin Daniel's first um, final week a seven-year period. And so we know that right now we are definitely in need of a peace treaty in Israel, but that might not be for many years before this happens. But we can see how this is something that will happen. In the middle of that week at the three and a half year mark, and it doesn't have to be exact, it just says three and a half weeks, it gives you months, it gives you uh, how, how long that is in days even. It says that the abomination that causes desolation in the middle of that week will sit on the throne, the Antichrist, and proclaim himself to be God. No longer will the Jews be able to participate in their peace treaty because they'll start to flee and run. They'll run for the wilderness because peace no more. And for three and a half years, the Antichrist will take his rule all the way through. Now, the persecution of the church kicks into full gear because the Antichrist, remember the dragon was thrown down and he was given the right to go after them. And he will come after the church, but Jesus won't let his church be wiped out by him. 
The church age will end somewhere within that three and a half year period. And the, the whole body of Christ, the church, will be caught up in the clouds to be with the Lord forevermore. This is called the rapture by most people. And then once that happens, that will trigger the, the seven seals to be broken, the seven trumpets to sound, and the seven bowls to be poured out. And they'll happen in the series, of, just as I had shared with you. The opening of the seals, the sounding of the trumpets, the pouring out of the bowls, until what? Until God's wrath is complete. And there, at the Valley of Armageddon, Jesus will return in a second coming in the clouds, just as he promised. That will complete Daniel's week. Now, chapters 12 through 16 of this revelation that we just looked at, it's given us an account of what will happen in heaven and on earth during the coming wrath of God within the time of tribulation. This is what John saw. It's what he wrote about. So we know that these things are going to happen. Here we see just some of the coming wrath of God, but we know that all those who are disobedient, all those who reject Christ, many today are even rejecting him. And they think, oh, no, in the very end, I'll go ahead and turn to him. You know, I'll give my life up then because I, I still have a lot of things in my bucket list. I still want to live my life the way I want to. Those people have this great, great delusion coming and they will believe the lie and they it will be too late for them because he will come. Christ said he will come at a time when no one expects it. So in the next part, we're going to continue our discussion in the revelation of Jesus Christ. But as always, we need to remain vigilant in our faith. We need to persevere to the end. And if we do, we will gain eternal life and a place with our Lord in heaven. So we need to be doing that now. And if we are doing that now, then we'll be walking as Jesus walked.